Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. Now today's video is going to be slightly different. I've decided to do a little bit of a poetry corner slash highlighted review of the publishing house Serene Books. So the two publishing collections I'm going to talk about are both from Serene Books and that is In Her Shambles by Elizabeth Parker and Visiting the Minotaur by Claire Williamson. I'm very new to poetry and I'm desperately trying to get into poetry so I've decided that I'll do a brief kind of description about what the collections are, the rating I gave them, what I enjoyed about them and then I'm going to do a little bit hopefully of poetry reading for you so I'm going to read some of the poems out of each collection, practice you know getting to grips with poetry. I'm not going to do a dissecting a poem, I know Jen over at Jen Campbell and her channel she does that a lot but I'm going to link that down below and then after I upload this video I'm going to go watch those videos so hopefully I'll learn a little bit more about how to actually dissect poetry but this is just an introduction to poetry for me and for you guys so please people who are massive fans of poetry please don't judge me I'm just taking tentative steps into the world of poetry so I just want to quickly mention Serene Books this is an independent Welsh publisher who sent me these books and I also got sent a historical fiction book called The Women of Versailles. Now this publishing house is beautiful, as you can tell these editions are just stunning and they have a lot of collections of poetry that they publish at Serene Books but they also publish novels, historical fiction, crime as well I believe. They are just a fantastic publishers, I've really enjoyed getting to grips with poetry. I've really enjoyed these collections, I think they're stunning and I just want to get a few more people to go and check Serene Books out as a publishing house because they were amazing. I got contacted by them to have these as review copies and they were so polite and attentive with what I, I was wanting. So for people who have a similar channel to me, please go check Serene Books out. They're on Twitter, they're on Instagram. And feel free to send them a message, tell them I sent you and say you're interested in some of the poetry collections that they publish and go and check some out because they're just fantastic publishers. So that's my rave for Serene Books over with. I'll link all the information, all their social media and their website down below so that you can go and check them out if you're interested. So now I'm going to just go on to this book first. So in her shambles, this collection I gave four out of five stars. This collection... I believe is very interesting and the picture I think gives a very good visual representation of the collection as a whole. There seems to be a whole plethora of different things going on within this collection. It focuses predominantly on relationships and there is some influence of nature as well within this collection. A lot of the poems kind of didn't resonate with me in terms of connecting and understanding as well but I really did enjoy this collection but some I had to skip because I kept rereading and I didn't understand. Now for me I grasp poetry a lot better by reading it aloud and playing with it. Sometimes the tempo is different of different poems and you can only get a sense of what it's trying to say when you read it aloud I sometimes feel. Um, whereas a lot of these poems I did attempt to read on the bus in the way to work, so I wasn't reading them aloud. enjoyed it though. I really enjoy relationships and some of the poems that I did like in here I thought were fantastic. And then this second poetry collection, I gave five stars because there was some poems that I didn't understand as well. But the reason for that is because my general understanding of Greek mythology and mythology in general is very vague. And as, as you can see, the collection is called Visiting the Minotaur. And so a lot of Greek mythology references are in here that I just didn't understand. But predominantly the collection also deals with grief and bereavement and how kind of mythology plays a role in this collection for unmasking grief but also from distracting from grief and a way to explain their grief through mythology which I found fascinating. I believe a lot of the poems have some kind of autobiographical route because the collection although they're published at different times really does have this underpinning of grief about the loss of a mother and a brother and repeated poems within the collection deal with that so I presumed it was autobiographical but I don't know much about Claire Williamson. Equally with Elizabeth Parker's collection I don't know whether some of those poems were autobiographical as well. These two poets belong to a writing group, the same writing group 
the Spoke Poetry Group. The Spoke Poetry Group is based in Bristol. They're both members of it and I believe that Claire Williamson referenced Elizabeth Park in her acknowledgements in this collection. But a lot of these poems were printed in magazines and other poem magazine collections. I don't know what the official word for that is. So anyway, that's just a brief overview of what these collections are about because I am not an expert in how to sell poetry to you guys but for any of you that's interested I noticed on Goodreads that both of these collections hadn't had very many people rate them and I know people who are fans of Jen Campbell's channel she deals with poetry a lot so I was just going to promote these in the sense that if you enjoy Jen Campbell's recommendations of poetry here's two new ones because I've only seen about two people on Goodreads individually review these so obviously these have not been read and reviewed by the general consensus of poetry lovers so here are two new collections to get your teeth into but that is all the kind of introduction out of the way i think i'm going to read some poetry for you guys and see how this goes down so i'm going to start with elizabeth parker's collection and the first one i am going to find is hughes hughes as the tower bell eased us from the clunk of the bank, we breathed a fusion of greens. Unpicked from the green weave, its prow nuzzled water into ripples and the bank began to blur. One lady wanted plant names, tried to unpick the green weave. Another wanted place names, another the species of birds, but we dared to blur to breathe a fusion of greens. We didn't want words, only a rush of green. The world blurred smooth as the tower bell eased us through. We let nothing cling, shed skin after skin. We would return to names, but for one afternoon we longed to slur, let our skin slick smooth through green hues. We let cities blur, forests slide, gave farms and fields the slip. So I really like that particular poem because of how it sounds, the kind of sibilance of these hues and the vivid colour of the different hues of green that's really prominent within that as you hear it. So obviously I'm not an expert at poetry, but those are something that when I read it, it really resonated. The colour and the sound were very vivid through that poem. And then another one I want you guys to listen to is Writing Him Out, which is one of the last ones. So Writing Him Out. She punctured the cartridge, squeezed until dark blue words slid into the slit of the nib. When ink stopped, she wrote a bright scratch, pressed the pen tip to her tongue, moistened a clock to free one more line. She bled the nib in a glass, swilled out dark silk, plug hole, gurgled up stained water and swallowed him down for good. So I really like that one. A poem that resonates with anybody that's ever dealt with a situation where you kind of want to erase the memory of someone and the pain that they have conjured up. I... I took it as a romantic kind of poem in the sense that it was about a romantic relationship that didn't work out. But it could equally be about a relationship to a father or a family member or losing someone, the idea of their identity being erased. So I think that was really multifaceted as a poem and it definitely has that feeling of, of loss or of, of coming to terms with something, of trying to diminish something so i found that very very interesting so then the very last one of this collection i want to read out to you is 10 30 to 7 beach 10 30 to 7 beach she sat beside me at montepler station she said she liked to see the seasons come in her ankles were threaded with the dark veins i thought of dead wisteria still gripping bricks her face was pink sacks gray pouches hung from ledges of bone she said she'd given up Clifton, high ceilings were hard to heat. On the other side of the line, bramble stalks were dark purple. We spoke of Brighton, propping your back on a groin, plucking at its barnacles, sliding fingers over tiny mirrors of black quartz, as the sea spat inky sprawls of bladder racks, snatched it back. She said you get it when there's a gale. In the morning, all those pebbles chucked out onto the promenade, and the water whooshing over might catch you any moment. She lived in a Regency house, just the basement though, and could always hear the sea, even in the dark. We talked of Andrel Castle, the gift shop, those lovely soaps and woollens. She led me there with her sentence. It's reached along a flat path at the bottom of the village. She stood up to go, said she didn't want to keep me. I wanted to keep her. I stepped through the lisp of sliding doors. On the 10.30 left, 
she was still sat on the bench. When I first read that, I, it, you're kind of are flooded with a bit of a sadness. That's a reflection on somebody else's life about a random encounter that had more of an impact than first presumed. That's what I took from it. So it'd be really interesting now that you've heard some of these poems out loud to see what you think of them and whether you think my assumptions are correct or completely wrong. So the next collection is Visiting the Minotaur and I want to read you a few of these poems. So the first one I want to read you is My Brother and Mother as Horses. They sit at a green plastic table with me after all these years, enjoying a pot of tea in May's sun. Stand up to paw, ignoring that they are horses. How else would they return? My brother still wears the blue noose, now loosened like a hippie necklace, drawing attention to the deep ridge cuts under his chin, like a tree trunk sawn by an amateur. I try not to stare. I couldn't grasp hold of the rope with these hooves. Once I jumped, it was too late. He waves them about, knocking his teacup out of its saucer. I grab a napkin, mopping up, nose crying over spilt milk. A silence follows, lit by the white flood of his skin, shining through close cropped hair. My mother, a blood bay, is shy, her forelock flopping over her forgive-me eyes. I'd say, I'd love to see more of your face. She thrusts her black muzzle into the cleft of my torso and arm, and I feel her warmth for the first time since she drank that poison. Her trembling mouth tugs the highwayman's hitch in my ribs, which I've had since she left me. Three months raw to the world, chewing my thumb to its bone. That knot which I pull tighter and tighter, lets go with a slip, a fall. They both reach out to catch me, but I'm the only one with arms. The tea set wobbles as if a steeplechase is passing. So I found that particular poem, the minute I read it, very emotionally moving, very intense. And it's obviously kind of talking about the idea of people coming back, of this whole idea of Buddhists that we reincarnate. And it's the unspoken imagination going wild about being able to see her brother and mother who obviously died and she's never really had a relationship with and there was so much unsaid or so so much in that poem that's written that leads you to muse on it and the overall atmosphere of that poem is very emotional so I really resonated and really connected with that poem straight away and really was intrigued by it and consider it was one of the first poems of the collection really gives you a lot to think about. So I'm going to read you Unimagined Mother 2. So, Unimagined Mother 2. I long for you privately to buy me a surprise red winter coat with roses round the hood, to love my daughters, have them on your mind. For me to make your lasagna, soak the pasta strips, mix the white sauce until free of lumps, serve it bubbling, triumphant. These secret longings comfort me when my girls are away. One unexpected gift is my confidence that mothers, even absent mothers, are forever mothers, however distant, however dead. So there is this autobiographical element of this poem is saturated with the absence of a brother and a mother and it's prominent within poems. I liked that one in particular because it didn't have this hidden element of the motif of the minotaur or a horse which seems to be a reoccurring motif within this collection especially when dealing with grief in this collection that's one of the rare poems in this collection that to me kind of deals with what it what it says on the tin what the poem is about is what the, the title is about and it's to the point that when she's raising her child and her children she thinks about the absence of the mother and and how her relationship was with her and those kind of poems that are centered around grief which sounds a really bad thing to say are some of my favorite poems i love connecting with that rawness of human emotion and i think it was done really well in that poem and then just one more i want to read for you guys and that is bristle now i'm presuming bristle is a kind of teenage young adult kind of a slang word for Bristol. A country schoolgirl, I ran into Bristol's arms, lovesick, August 91, freedom drunken, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Summertime in a Broadmead shoe shop where the ritzy girls found their perfect pair in leopard print platform brogues reflected in patent boots that reached under tartan minis like the river beneath the city centre. Back then I didn't know what it was that stopped me from spinning out of control like cars rounding St James Barton after midnight. I now know I was grateful for everything, even the concrete bear pit, Dingle's dated department store, 
Park Street's gradient, a choice of glass strewn dance floors. So I really like that nostalgia of the place where you come from and that identity growing up. So I presume that Brizzle is in Bristol, how they used to refer to the place when they were young and teenagers. And that nostalgia is very universal for, for the place that you live, regardless of where you lived. We all have similar things about the place that we live that we resonate with and really liked that particular poem because it's this warm nostalgia that wherever you come from, those memories of being a teenager, finding your identity, going to clubs or hanging around parks with your friends, creating the identity of who you are through the exposure of, of socialising or having places within your city that become markers of your identity as well. So this was not by any means a polished or a perfect video and my reading of poetry was by far also not polished or perfect but I just wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Poetry is a genre which I'm not well read in, not well versed in and don't know much about but I want that to change so this is a little bit of a nerve-wracking video for me but I want to get out there and show people that enjoy poetry that I want to get to a place where I enjoy it as much as you do and I want to learn more and I want to start a conversation about poetry so although this was rather embarrassing to read this out loud I really want to show that this is something I want to get more into. I also want to give a massive thank you to Serene Books for sending me those. I really enjoyed reading them. You're a fantastic publisher Rave, rave, rave to you and also rave to Elizabeth Parker and Claire Williamson for creating some fantastic collections of books. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to be alerted for when any of my future videos come out. And I'll see you very soon.